Good morning. Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay. And now for the prelude. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join in the call to worship. We recount the gracious deeds of God, all the praiseworthy acts of the Lord that the Lord has done for us. Praise, Praise God, God for coming to dwell among us, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Praise God for the good news of Jesus, the pioneer of our salvation. Praise God for making us siblings in Christ. Praise God who is present with us still, lifting us up and carrying us. God's glory shines in heaven and on earth. Praise the Lord.
Even in a season of celebration and joy, there is grief and pain. Even as we celebrate Christ's goodness, we know that we have not always lived it. Even in all this, Christ comes. Let us pray. Ever-present God, you became our Savior in all our distress, in all the ways we hurt, in all the ways we hurt others, in all the ways we feel neglected, and in all the ways we neglect others, in all the ways we cry out, and in all the ways we cause others to cry. You are with us, comforting us, holding us to account. In your love, redeem us once again. Lift us up and grant us your mercy, as you have throughout the generations. People of God, Christ came into this world for us, imperfect humans, perpetual sinners, saying, learning, striving. He came to be tested so that we might help, he might help us as we are tested to forgive us all our sins. Praise God, our merciful and faithful God. Before you're seated, take a moment to say good morning to someone nearby. And good morning to all of our friends online. We're glad you're here worshiping with us. You may be seated. My name's Jerusha Van Camp, and I am the parish visitor here at First Pres, and I am also preaching today. If you have not yet filled out the yellow slip that you can find in the pew, I invite you to do that. That allows us to see that you were here with us this morning and give thanks to God for your presence. And for our friends online, we invite you to comment in the chat and let us know you're worshiping with us virtually today. If you have a prayer concern, you can fill out the orange slip in the pew and place both the orange and the yellow slip in the offering plate as it goes by. And our virtual friends can also put your prayer request in the chat and we will lift those up to the Lord. If you haven't yet found the name tags, they're in the hallway as you come into the sanctuary. Um, if you're new and you don't have one, please feel free to write your name on one and we can make one for you before your next visit. An announcement that may not be in our, your bulletin, I haven't read through the whole thing yet, so I'm not sure that it is, is that on Sunday, January 15th, um, there will be a One God, One Community event. Um, it is a Martin Luther King Jr. commemoration, and it will be happening at Memorial Baptist Church. I think this is a very important thing to be noting, and it's absolutely fantastic to be able to get together with all of these congregations and mark this special day. It's at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, January the 15th, so please mark that in your calendars. According to our friends at Habitat for Humanity, the first day of building on the Habitat House, house in, um, in memory of Kevin Fleming starts this weekend. It's supposed to be Saturday and Sunday. I've been asking Billy, who works at the office, to make sure there's a link because I haven't been able to find one on the website. Um, so hopefully they've, they've gotten that up by now and you can actually sign up. I think you need to sign a waiver and um, and they'd like to know how many people are gonna have on the crew. So if you can help put a little blood, sweat, and tears into it, your help would be very much appreciated. Please check your bulletin for other announcements. 
We are so glad you're here on this New Year's Day. Let's continue our worship of God. Let us pray. Holy One, your word comes to us, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Holy word, you cross every border meant to shut you out. Holy wisdom, speak to us in the word read and proclaimed. Hearing, may we dream your dreams and faithfully follow wherever you lead. In your triune name we pray, amen. Our first lesson today comes from the Hebrew scriptures from the book of Isaiah, chapter 23, verses 7 through 9. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. Please join me responsively in today's psalm. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world young men and maidens, young and old together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Alleluia.
Our second lesson for today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help the angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes the hardest part of sermon planning is coming up with a title. And today's title is The Force of Love. It is human nature to dream and to wonder and to plan. And the beginning of a new year is an appropriate time to do such things. We look back, we consider the past, we consider the present, and we hope for the future. What a year 2022 has been. I, don't, I think it's safe to say that it did not turn out the way that any of us expected. In our dreaming and wondering about what life will hold, we don't think much about planning for loss or pain or suffering beyond hopefully having a life insurance policy just in case. How many of us annually revisit or have ever created a last will and testament? It's a morbid thought and it sure puts a damper on those hopes and dreams. We can't plan for the unexpected health crisis, divorce, losing a job, death, debilitating mental, emotional, or physical pain. The sobering reality that difficult things do happen to all people at all times in any place is a jolt to us all. It's these moments that we begin to really learn who we are and make choices about who we are becoming. For me, I think the hardest part of loss is getting my mind to comprehend and incorporate these new factors into the dreams, and then realizing that what I thought life would be like has changed. We long to go back to the world before it changed. It seems so unfair watching the beautiful come to an end. It's only natural that we wrestle in the midst of these trials, asking ourselves why, and asking God, why did it have to be that person? Why does the time we have get sh cut short for the people we love too much to lose? Why, does, why do they have to go through all of that? Why do bad things keep happening to me? Can I please just get a break? While it's true that a great deal of misguided Christian theology gives the impression that somehow being a Christian should give us a get out of suffering free card, that's just not true. In Matthew 5.45, scripture tells us that the sun rises and falls on the just and the unjust. We're all in this together, for better or worse. After our friend and elder Michael Thyssen died, I found comfort in the quote from the writings of the 14th century Christian mystic, Julian of Norwich. She wrote, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, for there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. 
Whatever you believe or don't believe about God or about faith does not change the reality that there is a force of love that is holding us all together. Love is the most powerful force in all of existence. It courses through the fabric of space and time and through every dimension. Love cannot be contrived or fabricated or controlled. Love breaks every boundary, obstacle, and wall. Love bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Julian of Norwich wrote about a series of visions that she had that had been published in a book called Revelations of Divine Love. She writes, Our Lord showed me a spiritual vision of his familiar love. I saw that for us he is everything that we find good and comforting. He is our clothing, wrapping us for love, embracing and enclosing us for tender love so that he can never leave us, being himself everything that is good for us. Julian's description of being wrapped and embraced in Christ's love mirrors the expression of God's comfort and nurture in today's text from Isaiah. It says, in their distress, it was God who saved them, specifically God's presence that saved them. The New Revised Standard Version translates the following words in this text as love and pity. Pity has a lot of connotations that don't sound very nurturing. But in the 2019 Robert Alter Hebrew translation, Alter translates this verse as, in his love and in his compassion, he redeemed them, plucked them up, and bore them all the days of yore. On this New Year's Day, we awaken to a new opportunity, to new hopes, new dreams. We awaken to a new year ripe with possibility. We are dreaming, we're hoping, and maybe even resolving to do some things differently. But I want to suggest that this year, at this time, as the world and as we in our congregation and in our personal lives are grappling with the very real and weighty reality of life and grief, our fears, great transitions, and our struggles, that rather than focus on exterior goals of more exercise or better planning or saving more money or whatever our plans may be to better ourselves, that instead we think about interior goals. I hesitated to use this example because there's something about it I don't like, but it just keeps coming back, so I'm going to use it anyway. <laughs> Have any of you ever been whitewater rafting? Yes? Not a hugely common experience. Uh, I have been several times throughout my life and I actually love it. It's so much fun. Um, it's an incredible rush to be paddling as a team through wild and rough waters. And because the waters are rough, every rafting guide will instruct the passengers on what to do if they get flipped out of the raft. The guides will tell you, don't try to swim. You have a life jacket on, just lift your feet, lay back, and let the current carry you to still waters. I'm pretty sure that if I ever get flipped out of a raft in the rapids, that will end my love of rafting. I am not a great swimmer, and how one could not panic while bobbing up and down in wild and rough waters while being smacked against rocks and branches, I don't know. How in that moment of terror could one think that just letting it happen is the way to survive? But these are the instructions that God gives to God's people in time of great difficulty and distress. Instead of taking control and deciding how we want things to go or to try to navigate, relying solely on our instincts, instead, God calls us to give ourselves to God's stream of love and allow ourselves to be plucked up and carried away. What if instead of striving and planning, we rest? allowing ourselves to be enveloped in Christ, letting him wrap us for love, embracing and enclosing us for tender love so that he can never leave us, being himself everything that is good for us. What if instead of trying to hold on and be strong, we let go, 
and allow tenderness and vulnerability and authenticity to grow? What if instead of setting goals that wear us down or set us up for failure, we, we reject the pressure of others' expectations and allow the presence of God to carry us, the voice of God to speak to us, and the nurture of the Holy Spirit to comfort us? Just as we cannot control what sorrows and suffering this life holds for us and what this year may hold for us, Neither can we control the force of love that carries us or control the presence of God that sustains us or control the res resurrection power of Christ that frees us. What if this year we resolve to surrender to the one who makes us new? The circumstances of life are going to play out this year regardless of what we do. There will be sadness and joy failures and successes, stress and rest. But may this year be different for us. May we be more faithful to resolve to give ourselves over to the force of love that holds the world together. And may the work that we do to better ourselves be a deepened focus to connect with God, the source of love, the embodiment of all that is love. As our text from Hebrews reminds us, Jesus did not come to help angels, but to help Abraham's descendants, and that's us. To help us by sharing in our suffering and in the perils and losses of life so that he can fully embrace us in our suffering and shower us with his great compassion and loving kindness. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, amen. remain standing as we affirm our faith 
using the passage from the uh, epistle of Paul to the Colossians chapter 1. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him, for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on heaven or on earth, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. All creation teems with the abundance of God's provisions. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, creeping things and flying birds. Our own lives bear witness to the abundance of God's love and mercy. For God has lifted us up and carried us in our need. In joyful praise we offer to God a portion of all that we have received.
Let us pray. In this gifting season, O God, we are so grateful for the gift of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Receive, we pray, these offerings we bring. May they be used in the service of your grace and truth dwelling among us. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And if you have not gotten um, one of the cups for communion, the little cups and the bread, um, please go ahead and get up at this time, either at the back or the front. I'm sorry that we didn't make that announcement earlier. And if you are at home watching virtually, um, please take a moment to get a cracker or a piece of bread and some juice or wine so that you can participate with us. Let us bring in prayer this week. Um, considering the following um, prayer concerns. Uh, for Suzanne Kohlmeyer, who is in rehab. Um, for Gerald Summers, recovering from after surgery. Um, for Walt, adjusting to life in memory care unit. For Nolan, who injured, was injured in a skiing accident this past week. For kids as they navigate tough decisions and situations. For first responders and for their safety. Prayers for Jade Glenn, age 14. Her mother died three mm -hmm. months ago. Her father died on Friday. Oh. Prayers for her grandparents and, of course, for Jade. Uh, prayers for th those who are in, uh, grieving at this time, for those struggling with dementia and other mental health concerns, for friends and members who live in residential facilities. All these we lift to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospels tell us that God, by, leading of, by the leading of a star, manifested the Savior to the peoples of the earth. And by the power that enabled Christ to change water into wine, made known his glory to the disciples. Come then to the joyful feast of our Lord and be transformed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. With joy we praise you, gracious God, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord who came among us as the world word made flesh to show us your glory, full of grace and truth. Therefore we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Lord, you are mighty in power yet abounding in mercy. While the whole world was marred with sin, you made a covenant with your people. You promised to renew creation. You promised to give hope amid this sorrow, healing in the place of sickness and wholeness in place of emptiness. You stepped into our darkness in the person of Jesus Christ, who willingly lived among us. He came quietly to a young unwed mother through the power of the Holy Spirit. He came to us as a helpless boy. He experienced our human joys and sorrows. Then the Lord of the universe showed us how to live. 
He healed the sick, cared for the least of society, and took time for children. He forgave sins and performed miracles. He forgave sins and he loved and he served. He gave up his very life for us, his friends. He died the excruciating, disgraceful death of a criminal for us. Yet you raised him out of the tomb and he triumphed over death so that we too may live. Creator God, be present with your life-giving word and Holy Spirit that we and your entire church may be called out and made whole through this supper. Grant that all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be united with him, and may we all remain faithful in love and hope until we feast joyfully with Christ at the coming and completion of your realm. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest and betrayal took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the remission of your sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat and rejoice. Let us pray. Glorious, gracious God, you have fed and nourished us at your table, and we are so grateful. You have met us where we are, O oh God, and filled our needs yet again. Grant that we may do the same for all your children. May we leave this place to love abundantly, love you with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. May our lives joyfully display our hope in you. In the power of your Holy Spirit and in Christ's name we pray, amen.
2023, let's get carried away, carried away by the greatest force that ever existed, the force of love, the love of God who wraps us. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.